Hey everyone, it's Mark. This is my recap for Pokemon Journeys episode 114, a fire training battle, Ash versus Paul. This was the 1199th episode of the Pokemon anime and the last episode before the Masters tournament gets underway. There's plenty to talk about this week with an amazing episode as well as the previews we got for the Masters tournament. Let's not waste any time and get straight into it. The episode opens with Ash's team all training together at the Cerise Park. Although it has been pretty obvious to me this entire time, it's worth mentioning that this episode more or less confirmed that Ash will only be using his Journeys team in the Masters Tournament. That means none of his old Pokemon will return for these battles, but that's exactly what I was expecting to happen. I only made this video because I knew it would get a ton of views, and it did. Anyways, Go is asking what Ash's plans are for his training, and Ash basically doesn't have a plan. That is, until Professor Oak calls him, saying he should come over sometime. Ash literally doesn't even blink and immediately decides to head over there before Oak even finishes his sentence. We cut straight to Oak's lab where Professor Oak congratulates Go on becoming a chaser. Before they can really say anything else, Ash's Pokemon charge up to greet him with Pale Leaf leading the charge. How sweet. We haven't even gotten to the opening theme yet at this point in the episode, but it's already full on reunion time. For some reason, Gibble and Palpatoad really take a liking to Go, so they just end up biting and cuddling with him for the rest of the episode. Just about the only shocking thing in this reunion was the fact that Ash's Tauros didn't run him over like they usually do. They just made a cameo running by in the background. Ash gets his Journeys team out and announces to all of his old Pokemon that he is competing in the Masters tournament, and he wants them to share their power with his Journeys team. I thought what happened next was kind of strange, as a ton of Ash's Pokemon just send attack straight up into the sky like some kind of contest appeal. That was kind of weird, but I guess a cool way to see a lot of Ash's Pokemon in action again. Also, Gengar pretty quickly takes an interest in the Fire-type Pokemon specifically, not sure why exactly. Gengar touches Infernape, I guess, to see what's going on with the energy they are all giving off, and this not only sets Gengar's arm on fire, but it also shoots Gengar back like 300 yards away. How did that even happen? Gengar's fall is broken by an electric attack, which was sent by this random Electivire. Well, it's not just any random Electivire, because this is Paul's Electivire, and the man himself is here after 544 episodes since his last appearance. Their meeting here is, well, awkward to say the least, but it's interrupted when Professor Oak and Ash his fire types catch up to them. Torkoal also just disappears for this part, not sure why, but I am strongly against this Torkoal erasure. Ash's Infernape is here, however, and there's a tense stare down between Paul and his former Pokemon. Gengar and the other fire types go off to train somewhere, while Paul tells Infernape to go join them. Surprisingly, Infernape listens to Paul and runs off, taking Professor Oak along with. We get a flashback montage of Paul and Infernape's history. It still doesn't really clear up to me why Infernape was so obedient to Paul in this moment, but it's such a minor detail, so let's not worry about it and just move on. We see Gengar training with Ash's fire type Pokemon, and Professor Oak observes that they might be teaching Gengar a new move. Then there's plenty of shots of Ash's Journey's team training with lots of Ash's old Pokemon, nothing too crazy to note here, except I guess now is a good a time as any to mention that in this episode, Ash's Kingler broke the record previously held by Misty's Corsola for having the longest absence between physical appearances for a main character's Pokemon. It's been 792 episodes since Kingler last showed up. That's crazy. Back to Ash and Paul, who must have had some conversation off screen, but clearly it was a pretty chill one. Paul reveals that he didn't participate in the World Coronation series because he's not one for festivities. What a stupid reason. Anyways, Ash just cuts straight to the point and challenges him to a battle. Paul accepts the challenge, setting the rules as 3v3 without substitutions, as well as the additional stipulation that Ash can only use Pokemon that he plans on using in the Masters tournament. Ash goes back to get his Pokemon ready to battle, and we see that Gengar has successfully learned the new move Will-O-Wisp. That's an odd move. I definitely would not have expected that, but alright. Now the stage is set for Ash and Paul's battle. The battle gets off to a hot start with Lucario versus Gyarados, and eventually Gyarados counters Lucario's double team with a Hyper Beam. This gives Ash the confidence to tell Lucario to close in on Gyarados, but despite having to recharge after the Hyper Beam, Gyarados still catches Lucario with its tail. This reminded me so much like how Paul battled with Drapion at the Sinnoh League. Lucario ends up taking a lot of damage here, but eventually it breaks free by using Steel Beam. But this changes something with Lucario. It almost looks like it's built up some kind of steel power in its fists. 
Paul is surprisingly encouraged by this development, but when he calls for another hyperbeam, Ash tells Lucario to counter with Bullet Punch, and Lucario's new move gets there before Gyarados can attack. Gyarados does eventually get a hyperbeam off, which of course Paul just shakes off in the most stoic Paul way possible, and when the dust clears, Gyarados has been knocked out. They each send out a new Pokemon, I guess this is more like a best of three battle than a regular 3v3, and next up it's Dragonite vs Garchomp. Paul and Garchomp get an early advantage, but once Dragonite gets knocked back with Draco Meteor, Ash counters with a Draco Meteor of his own, but this time he has Dragonite fire it directly at Garchomp and tells Dragonite to charge in alongside the Draco Meteor. Ash would dub this new technique Dragonite Meteor, at least that's what I'm guessing it will be called in English, but anyways, Dragonite also got knocked out here after Garchomp countered with Dragon Claw. Paul sends out Metagross for the decisive third matchup, and Ash sends in Gengar. They get off to a quick start with Metagross's agility being able to match Gengar's speed. Paul changes course and has Metagross on a direct hit with Psychic, and yeah, Gengar's not looking so good right now. After dealing some major damage, Paul taunts Ash, basically telling him that he has no chance at winning the Masters Tournament. Ash and Gengar fight back by using will o wisp which takes a surprisingly long time to build up, but it still hits Metagross without any issue. I cannot really believe it got hit by this after it was so quick before when using agility. Anyways, Metagross tries to shake off the burn and charges in with Meteor Mash, but obviously it's not as powerful thanks to the status condition. Huh, no shock that a battle between Ash and Paul would have status conditions play a key role. Gengar takes the opportunity and fires off a Shadow Ball, knocking Metagross out, winning Ash the battle. Gengar celebrates with the fire types who help teach him Will-O-Wisp and go ask Paul about his choice of Pokemon, something that he had picked up on during the battle. Go explains how Paul's Pokemon were Lance, Steven, and Cynthia's ace Pokemon, so Paul must have intentionally picked those Pokemon to help prepare Ash for the Master Class. Paul doesn't say anything in response, but does smirk, basically acknowledging Go's hypothesis. With that, Paul takes his leave, not before saying goodbye to Infernape, again a little weird seeing these two so friendly. Ash sends Paul off by saying that they should battle again someday, which of course Paul only acknowledges with a wave of his hand. Professor Oak explains to Ash and Go that actually, Paul has been asked to become a gym leader. I guess he was kind of acting like a gym leader today, that checks out I suppose. Anyways, Ash is all fired up now and he is glad he came to Oak's lab today. For some reason, Ash's mother is also here and she tells Ash and Go to just stay the night at Ash's home, and the episode comes to a close with a shot of Ash's Journeys team alongside all the Pokemon currently at Oak's lab, as well as Go and Grookey. Another phenomenal episode of Pokemon Journeys, and I mean really, episodes like this one are really only possible in a series like Pokemon Journeys. I feel like some people have been waiting for this kind of fan service for a long time. I guess that's where I'll start with my discussion about this episode, how it was like the pinnacle of fan service. They included all of Ash's Pokemon that live at Oak's lab. That's awesome. Seeing all of them again was so cool, and it just brings back so many awesome memories of their past adventures with Ash. With that, Paul's return has been one of the most anticipated returns in all of Pokemon Journeys, and as per usual, they absolutely killed it with this returning character. So even though I can label this episode as fanservice-y, it was fanservice with a purpose. I'll get my two small complaints out of the way, first being that Paul's reason for not competing in the World Coronation series was so dumb. Like, Paul's entire backstory in Diamond and Pearl was that he competed in all of the same Pokemon League competitions that Ash did, well, besides the Orange League, and I just don't understand why he wouldn't be in the World Coronation series if he's the same person who competed in events such as the Hard Home Tag Battle competition and the Pokey Ringer just because he thought it would be a good way to get stronger. The reveal at the end of Paul having been asked to become a gym leader was an interesting development. I think it would have been way better narratively to have Paul set to become a frontier brain because that would have signaled that he had finally defeated Brandon. If you remember back to the end of AG, Ash was offered the role of frontier brain after defeating Brandon and earning his last frontier symbol, so it would have been cool for Paul to have achieved that as well, since it was such a key part of Ash, Paul, and Paul's brother Reggie's relationship back in DP. With all of that said, everything else in this episode was awesome. Ash and Paul's training battle was, well, a training battle, and it was never meant to be an epic continuation of their rivalry, but instead a chance for Ash to get one last training session in before the Masters Tournament. If Paul is going to be a gym leader, then this battle was a pretty good indicator of what he will be like. Ash has fought against these types of gym leaders before. They have a tough exterior, and they are no pushover in battle, but they are also trying to get the best out of their challengers. I think the line that epitomized this was when Paul reacted positively 
lead to Lucario beginning to learn Bullet Punch. It was clear in that moment that his goal here was to help Ash and his Pokemon grow stronger together. Not only did Lucario learn Bullet Punch, but Ash also created his new Dragonite Meteor technique along with Gengar learning Will-O-Wisp. None of these three moves seem that extraordinary to me, but I am sure they will all come into play during the Masters Tournament. Paul may have claimed that he only came to Oak's lab so that he could learn more about Pokemon, but I think he was just being coy. I thought there were plenty of subtle hints throughout this episode that this was a setup to help Ash train for the Masters Tournament. I mean, even Oak was in on the fact that Paul was here. He must have called Ash over because Paul was there waiting for him. Paul may still have his tough exterior, but clearly he has grown and matured a lot, and this character growth was pretty evident throughout this episode. All in all, lots of highlights and not too many drawbacks to this one, so I'm giving this episode a 9 out of 10 rating. Rating. That's two weeks in a row now that I've given a rating of 9 out of 10, and we shall see if that can continue next week as the Masters Tournament gets underway. This looks like your basic first episode to any league arc, with Ash arriving and meeting up with the other competitors. I cannot wait to see these two kids interact with their fellow champions. This episode will also feature Hop's debut, and it looks like he and Ash will have a quick battle. The more important battle that will start in the next episode is Ash vs. Leon, one of the first announced matches of the Masters Tournament. Instead of talking about just that match specifically, let's talk about all of them, shall we? So they released another special preview, this time hyping up the matchups that we're going to see in the Masters Tournament. I thought the start of the preview did a really good job highlighting how everyone wants to defeat Leon, but let's see who is actually battling who in the first round. As previously mentioned, Leon vs. Alon is the first battle. I guess the anime couldn't resist doing a Charizard vs. Charizard clash, but it's pretty obvious that Leon will win this one. My only question is whether the chestnut we saw Alon using is chest beat, but I doubt it. Lance vs. Diantha is up next. This was not a matchup I was expecting, and I have basically no predictions for it. I'm just really surprised they decided to have these two battle each other. Cynthia vs. Iris makes a lot more sense, and this was arguably the battle I wanted to see the most out of any potential matchup between the Masters 8. That leaves Ash vs. Steven to round out the first round, and wow, I honestly cannot believe this is who Ash is battling in the first round. Don't believe me? Well, here was my reaction to seeing this matchup get announced. <laughs> what? This is who? Oh, wow. Wow. Ash is battling Steven? Wow. I recorded like a 12 minute video reacting to this special preview and breaking it all down, so be sure to go check out the full thing over on my Discord server. It's one of the many Discord exclusive videos that I have posted over on my server. I like to switch things up and make a little bit different content for my friends over on Discord. Anyways, I could go on talking about the Masters Tournament all day, but I will save that for some upcoming videos this week. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss those, and don't forget to hit like on this video before you click off. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.